Let's get started. Let's talk about stance, okay? You don't understand really until you start playing like the big bad boys that it's really, really like it's it's more important than you think, right? So we always talk about having a well a, a well poised stance. The man of, who's going to be basically who's basically talking to you through Ghost is Joe Thomas. So I mean, all this stuff Joe has talked to me about, right? So when we talk about a three point stance, we want to find a we want to find a stance that works for both run and pass. Okay, and so. When we talk about it, right? So I'm just everything I do is gonna be out of a right tackle stance. You want to be able to find a base, a, a coach that we work with. This is this is basically how he taught us and how Joe does it. You see, when you see Joe go up to the line, he'll walk, he'll break out the huddle, he'll put his post foot. Just imagine he, he's at left tackle. He put his post foot down. He'll look down because. He wants his head to be even, so sometimes he does a little bit, bit even more lean in his stance, especially his two point, because he wants to try to cheat it. In the NFL, you gotta break the center's hip or, you're, or you're, it's a legal formation and you're off. And so we get a lot of warnings at tackle. Um, hey, 73 needs to scoot up. 73 needs to scoot up on the ball. You don't have to worry about that with Joe because Joe, He's always really technical on making sure he's looking down at the center's hip, and he lines his his up foot with the guard's up foot. And that's really important because if he's able to do that, then he's able to get into a comfortable stance to where his head he knows consistently. He doesn't even have to look, and he's breaking the plane of the center. And so the biggest part after that is in finding a balance, right? Um, so walks up to the line, checks his foot up foot with the guards up foot, right? Get him down. Then his three point stance is literally his two point stance with just his hand down. If you can find that, and you can basically find a two point stance that is comfortable as a player to be able and pass love. And all you have to literally do is literally put your hand straight in the ground and you're able to not show tendencies. So here's, for example, me, right? So when I first got to the NFL, every single time, because I have bad reflection, something I need to work on, right? So I, I need to be able to open up to cut off a three technique and we'll get over that ter terminology in a sec. I would always, SC, we, and you'll see in our film, they, my whole senior year, they just told me you can play out of two point because I was able to be in a comfortable enough stance and I wasn't able to bend enough to put my hand in the ground. But I had a comfortable enough two point stance to where I couldn't do this in the NFL because I would cheat it up, right? So if I'm in the pass, I'd have that leg back more. And then if I was ever in a run, I'd have that foot up more because that way I'm able to step here but the biggest part, the biggest challenge that I had was cutting off, opening up, and cutting off the three technique. So, like I said, if you're able to find a stance to where you're comfortable enough and your player is comfortable enough to where he can pass set and he can open up, that's the most dangerous thing in football. In there, Larry, what are you thinking? See what I'm saying? programs are starting to evolve. Right. Uh, Guam High does a lot of film, and right. uh, so does FD. But like I said, those schools uh, have a little more resources. So, we're, so we're more at advantage here. Like, like you guys are at more advantage because you're going to be able to teach. I'm telling you, like, like you need to spend days with these kids finding that stance. And if you start at a youth level, holy shit, when they get to high school, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when that's when it gets passed on and that's when it spreads, right? And, and it's really insane. Um, it's insane. Like, there's so many different things. Like I said, hand barely in the dirt and there's little things we do to try to cheat, but we don't want to do that. We need to, basically when I go back to the States, right now I'm just, me and him are just doing cardio 
and we're just keeping our legs loose and stuff and getting massages right now because we're on vacation. When we get back, I'm literally spending like an hour working on like a day, like working on five days a week, working on stance and get, making it comfortable. Like I'm literally sitting in my stance and, and making it comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Making the uncomfortable comfortable. And that's something I never did before the NFL. And, 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 it, and, it, and it's, just, it's just bad. So let's talk about just the basics of the three-point stance. You'll see with Joe, he kind of does this. He always, he turned his pass two-point stance. He worked it so damn much that he's able to run block out of it. Does that make sense? And he's able to open up. He's able to see. Here's a tough thing too, and this is when the strength, the uh, the strength training comes into it, right? But it's also well balanced. So when he comes up to the line, puts his foot up, check right. And then he takes his foot. You'll see he does this. You see how on my foot, on my pressure, he'll walk up and do this. If 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 if, 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 if coach stand up for me. Do this. Just stand on one foot, make it kind of solid. You're going to go out of the left, and then just fall back. That's your natural base, right? Now, what I'm going to tell you right now, square the hips to me. Yeah, 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 right? Because the reason why, and even what you want to do, now this all depends on flexibility. You may not be able to see his foot, but it's turned out. That's okay. You don't want that to come too far up. Because when you want to go into, you want all your cleats to be in the ground. Because if I'm, if I know I'm gonna have to cut that three technique, the only difference between what's up, boys? The only difference between my stance is literally muscular. I'm going to, and I'm just look. I'm gonna cheat my foot out, my back right foot. I'm gonna open that up just a little bit, so I can get all my cleats in the ground. And I want to, if I know I'm going to cut off a three technique, I need to put all the pressure into this foot right there in that front foot and make that loose because that's first step to pushing off that foot. Does that make sense? So that's why you want all the heels in the ground. So some kids are just going to have to have their foot turned a little bit. Just that, your, that when you do this, that's how wide you should be. Would that be the same kind of stance? Same thing. Same thing? You want that. Look at, look. Well, there's not, there's not, um. It's going to be the same kind of. Who's the best blocking tight in the league, Ron? I will say it's Yeah. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Like, like, look at film. Watson? Watson? If you can have, Oh, yeah, yeah. If you can, it's hard, bro. Like, tight ends like Najoku with us, our first round pick. He's more of a catching guy. Yeah. That guy can do both block and catch. If you can get that at a tight end position, stupid. You want your tight end spending just as much time, and, and your tight end's coach spending just as much time working on stance in the off season and being able to now. If I'm a center, down the middle, we call that a head up technique or nose. Some people call it a zero. Let's just call it a zero right now, okay? So a zero, head up, head up zero. When he's on the outside, he's straddling the outside foot of the center on either side. It's called a shade. Inside foot of the guard, straddling the inside foot of the guard is a two eye. Head up is a two. So the eye on these things, you got two eye, you got four eye, it's a number system. When we're coming off the ball, or we're coming off on the sideline, and coach says, hey, what was the look you had? Hey, I had a three technique. Hey, I had a two eye. Hey, I had a two. How, how, you know, how much does that help you as a coach? You, you know exactly what kind of look you got, right? You can blame Brad Bryan on this. This is the hardest part about it his leg or anything outside is a nine technique and sometimes you can use the term when he's out here you can use wide nine okay so this helps us 
from an identifying standpoint, hey, Zach, what were you getting? I was getting a nine every single time, Coach. No, Coach, he was playing a tight five. Now, when you're to the open side, if he's tight on you, it's a five technique. Anything outside to nine. Make sense? Questions? Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, yep. Under, three technique is away from the strength. <coughs> Shade is to the strength. Over, opposite. And then obviously, some, depending on, on, on what formation we're giving them as an offense, these linebackers are different. But this is a standard right here, 4-3 defense. And Larry knows more of that stuff about filling holes so who's responsible for what, what gap and stuff like that? Well, 3-4 defense, and like I said, it all depends on the D lineman. Two guards are uncovered. No one's over the guards. So you have no three techniques, no twos, no two eyes. That makes sense? Sometimes, depending on your coaching scheme, if this guy, let's say, we know we have a two-by-two two formation, and this will, is out here to cover. Some defenses might put this guy instead of a four eye because he's going to have contain and a head of four. And sometimes in pass rush situations, especially in the NFL, you see it a lot. It might put him in a, in a five. Nothing wide though because you're not going to put him in a wide nine because it, you know, I mean, if he's in a wide nine, we're running the ball this side every single time, right? What do you think is the most uh, efficient, efficient way to teach them? Teacher, if you don't have dominance or sleds or anything. What are we talking about? Like just to teach them pass block, run block, you know what I mean? Yeah, like so if you don't have any bags and stuff. Yeah, you don't have bodies. Yeah, you just use you bodies. Just you, gotta, you gotta use each other. So yeah, we split exactly. up offense, defense, yeah. right? Yeah. And we're working all line. I know, understand, like, you know, in high school, especially half of the practice, <coughs> we've got a lot of guys that play both ways. Half the practice, we're doing offense. Yeah. Half the practice, we're doing defense. Um, you know, Basically, it's a simple technique you would teach an offensive line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And the, the end coming, how do you want one to open up? Now you can you right here. That's you know nice. I mean? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. Pass, cool. pass, pass, that's, that's the next thing. And then also run blocking. Like, Are they going to push with their, you know what I mean? Yeah. Engage like this? Right. Because, you know, they teach, they say you, you're supposed to focus on it. supposed to like, engage and then you can grab, right? Right, you right. Say that, right? right. And then when, you, when you apply it on the field, it's hard to teach the kids that. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to get so much into yeah. the run block, okay. but when we're talking, shoulders, no, 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 they no, push. no, no, yeah. no, 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 guys, no more forearm football, okay, yeah. I'm being serious, Thank only you. time you might use a forearm is let's say, if Larry, you come up here please, let's say, um, and coach, we keep using you as an example, come up here please, you're going to be, um, Larry, you're going to be my guard, and then you line up on three technique right, right here on, your, uh, on Larry. So line up right there, perfect. Let's say we have a, what we call a deuce block. So on the power game, me and Larry are deucing to the backside linebacker, right? We're not talking about any schemes, this, this clinic. We're not talking about um, you know formations and, 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 and power schemes. But let's say me and him have to deuce to the backside linebacker. And then the, front, the backside guard is pulling for the front side linebacker or, or to the mic, right? When I'm going to step, yep, you're good right there. This is the only time when we have a combination block that I might need to use my form. Because, and I use it, and coach, some coaches are, are say, let's do it. Some coaches don't. They want themselves to get their hand right there to be able to because it's more of a surface and you can control them with that hand. But realistically, as an offensive lineman, I'm more powerful moving this guy. I'm sorry, Coach, I kind of got kind of an elbow. Um, moving this guy right here. And then when Larry goes off on the linebacker, I get my head front side, and then I take this hand. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very, very hard skill to be able to hear, get him off his feet a little bit, get that head. He's gone. So we don't want, if this separation happens and he's gone, and I keep that elbow there, 
take that, take that inside hand right there and push it away. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Forearm football is bad. Does anybody disagree? <coughs> Out the door. I was very, very, I was hoping a coach came in here and told me that no, we need to block with our forearms because I wasn't asking why. And then, you know what I'm saying? We need hands. That is the only time that I might use a shoulder, I might use an elbow or a shoulder. Some Joe Thomas does a shoulder. So when we're a combination, he's going, Larry's got that inside right here. And then I put him, my shoulder, onto that hip, knock him onto my guard, and climb. But that's like just, you know what I'm saying? Answer your question, Coach? Talking about the interior line. Where that quarterback consistently is helps the offensive line. If the quarterback, a, a sucky quarterback, changes his tendencies and his drops. So as a tack on um, the inner core, they keep, they establish the, um, the, 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 the inner core of the pocket, right? So that quarterback wants to be able to set up back here, and those three right there establish the depth of the pocket. The, um, the tackles, <coughs> they establish what happens out here, and the depth of where that quarterback knows that if I'm setting up at five, and I'm right here, and I know my tackles, <coughs> Or, or they know that I'm at a five-step drop, which is usually consistently around five to six yards away from the original line of scrimmage. Usually, that's what we try to what it's usually what we try to establish on a five-step drop. Three-step is usually about if it's in shotgun, it's consistently boom right here. If we're coming out right here, so and the ball needs to go out in a three-step thing. So <coughs> Joe gets on his quarterback's on high. Right here, and the quarterback is right here. His quickest way, right, is a straight line. Me as a tackle, I need to alter that line. And I need to establish, so let's say, let's say we're just talking about a three-step drop and, and, and it's out of the shot, and he's not, he, if anything, he might take one little gallop right there, right? And he might set up right there. But that has to be consistent with the quarterback because the tackle knows that if he's usually three to five yards or three to four yards, if I keep kicking, sooner or later he's going to be even with the quarterback. So understanding, knowing the drop of the QB is by far one of the most important things in pass protection <laughs> in all aspects of the line because if this, if the interior core knows it's a three-step <coughs> drop, and the ball's coming out quick, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive in my set. I'm not going to give more ground. Do you get what I'm saying? <coughs> the play action, we're not only are we selling the run, but usually the quarterback is, is, is setting up not sometimes seven to nine <coughs> yards in the backfield. As an as a, um, offensive tackle, I need to know that because I need to know, and we're going to talk about it in a sec, that I need to get back more. I need to get back more. Because, and, and, and we'll talk about that in a sec, because you're giving yourself time to not only be able to read the rush, like let's say they put their defensive end in an immediate stunt and the sand comes off the edge and we're sliding to that direction. If I get back off the ball, I can see all that happen. Does that make sense? Because if I give him two hands, bye-bye. You keep this inside hand free when you pass that. This is your savior. Your inside hand is, is ultimately, Coach, like you said, dangerous, most dangerous part, especially for tackles, but any offense alignment. This is what I call a catch hand. This is what I call a punch hand. Joe's theory, and it's fucking amazing, I keep this hand here. When I'm punching him, I want to, here's the right there. I want to see knowing how long my arms are, is going to be different for a stubby guy in the inside or stubbier tackles with shorter arms, right? But when I punch, 
I want to aim my hand for that bicep. The reason why, when I aim my hand for that bicep to punch that shoulder, to try to knock it out, but aim my fingers, you see my fingers are landing on that bicep, but I'm punching that. If Larry goes to swipe that hand on the outside, outside, he's knocking the hand backside. So if I hit this and he knocks it in, I still have, I still have the ability, if he knocks it in, he's knocking it into himself. Coach. Can you guys just turn around? My fault. I'm sorry. My fault. My fault. All those guys are. You're good. No worries. No worries. <laughs> so when he knocks that in, he's knocking it into himself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's really not. The old school way is I want to punch that guy as hard as I can. It's really not a punch. It's more of a catch, but keeping that arm locked. So important part too, right? We talk about fundamentals. My hand turn thumb up because the reason why is when he does do that and I strike, I'm in there. But you see how this is locked? All this is locked out. That is like acting like a, um, it's like it's like a, it's like a steel rod, right? If I have my thumb up and that elbow locked on the punch, and I learn how to time that up. So when we have bags, and this is going to be something that we work, you're holding a bag right there, and they're working the drill. You're punching and grabbing and gripping. Punch, grip, punch, grip, punch, grip. But you want that to be locked out because if that's bent at all, he gets that in there. Or if he comes to bull me and that's in there, I'm getting a knock. But if he comes to bull, and I have that lot, I have a better chance of fighting. Questions about that? Um, inside hand catch. Remember how I talked about the inside hand being loose and ready to catch. You want to, um, I'm sorry, Larry, I'm going to use you again. You want to, when you go and you're setting, and he goes to make that inside hand, I'm aiming for that shoulder tip. Does that make sense? So he's, he's, he already has beaten me to where he's getting on my inside. This is going to bail me out. Now, obviously, no one is going to be able to do that with a locked arm because you're going to tear your, your shoulder, your pec. So it's bent a little bit. Aim for the shoulder tip. Another part, inside foot big part. When he goes inside and I go, my foot matches my hand. And the, the only way you can really stop an inside move consistently, and what, this will pop up on the film, because um, I wasn't using this technique in college yet. This is going to pop up on the film when we, um, when we get into it on the third day. I come, and he goes inside. I need to lose ground and almost open this hip. No, not almost. Open this hip. That's a term that we use. Open this hip. Because if I don't move that foot and I try catching like this, I'm always off balance. Does that make sense? Yes. Any questions? <coughs> so, biggest part, thank you. I'm fucking working up here, boy. So you're you always chopping your feet when you're, when you're blocking? Here's the thing. You don't want your feet off the ground. You don't ever want to be caught in this position because you can't change direction. And that's going to be a part that we talk about in a little bit, about getting back and staying square to the next point. But getting back and getting back and my feet consistently, you see I'm dragging this inside foot, I'm keeping it in the ground and I'm pushing <coughs> off this foot. Slide, slide. Good question. So I'm in the ground. So how do you recover when you're already beaten to the side? Just to drop the foot. Just drop. So let's talk about, good question. Let's talk about if he beats me off the ball on the outside and he already gets a jump. He's even with me and I kick set. I need to turn this toe, <coughs> open up. If I don't turn this toe, then I'm always going to have to do this. Bailout. Yeah, everybody has a bailout. Everybody gets beat off the ball. If he gets that jump and he beats me outside, I have to open up. 
take that hip and drive him past the drive him past the pocket. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, kind of. You want to keep your feet, so it's it's a little bit different because you got to keep your feet in the ground. You're not always doing that like a boxer. But when I'm working on my pass sets and I'm getting back and stuff, I'm here. I'm loose. You know what I'm saying? My, my shoulders are loose. I had a problem, you're going to see it in the film, I had a problem that every time I passed that, I was here. Stiff as a wedding dick. You know what I'm saying? Like just here. No, loosen up. You know what I'm saying? That's a football term. That's the W. So, 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 you got to keep that. It's, it's 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 almost a swag about you. You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 are loose up here. Your shoulders are loose. You're keeping that hand free. This is my strike hand. This is my catch hand. Beat inside. Drop the foot. I didn't even drop the foot that time. Drop the foot. Open up. Square up. But still keep that stagger. Because when you drop that foot, and sometimes people have the issue, when they drop that foot, they switch the staggers. To a certain degree, if you get caught in that, you need to figure a way to not only get in front of them, but get back out. Because guess what? We're trying to keep them inside out. That's another huge term. Inside out, not outside in. Because the outside in, that's where the quarterback is. So if you end up getting to a point where everybody's right here, that's a sack. That makes sense? We teach our youth to go in three-point stance. I mean, what do you suggest as far as for the tackles? Do both, three points, two points. My guards are able to get a two points sometimes. Right? They're two points a little different. Less stagger, right? A little bit more up square in their stance. They're more here instead of being as, I mean, some tackles do have a square stance, but tackle stance and the, and, the, and the guard stance is just a two point stance. Only difference is maybe a little bit more square because guards need to be a little bit more aggressive, right? Remember we were talking about setting the pocket, the depth of the pocket? I, I, whenever I go and coach kids in Tacoma, I always, I don't, I don't give a damn if they're youth, high school, college, I'm teaching them the same things. Don't hold these little kids to the standard of bailing them out of technique, because that's just bad practice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can sit, there's so many different things that we can talk about, is the getting back and staying square. So what I was telling coach earlier, and some of you guys might have heard it, is that the biggest problem sometimes in, in, in pass protection is where my hips are. If I'm, if I'm consistently pass setting and opening this hip, I'm facing this way, right? <coughs> Defense alignment sees this, what is it? Two way go. He sees this, open hip, he can go inside, he can go outside. And then you're here, you're trying to do the whole old school basketball technique and stay in the front. It's not consistent. If I'm able to pass that and keep my hips square, I'm only giving him one way. If he wants to go inside, good for him. And sooner or later, right there, we're locked up. But if I can keep that as square as long as possible until we do reach that point where we're going to make contact, then I can not step but open that hip and engage. That, that, that's, and that's usually on a bull rush, because remember what we talked about, right? We talked about that outside hand striking. The badass dudes can literally stay square the entire time and strike. Consistency on the hips. If my hips open, if my hips open, bad ball. If we can get a guy who can get on him right now, or we got a guy who can vertical set, I mean, change it up, that's giving them a different look. Because his rush depends on me. And all, the best offensive lineman in the world tell him what to do. He does not have free room. He does not get to do what the fuck he wants to do. And my set all depends on that. So when we talk about the vertical set, we're literally talking about being nobody, even when you hear guys talk about getting straight back, Sooner or later, there's going to be some wiggle out here 
that's realistic. That's more what it's going to look like. But that's a lot more vertical than jumping a guy out here. The center is going to give himself ground just a little bit. Now, I don't need big ass steps. Every time we step and every time we move, feet, 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 short, 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 right? Like even if I'm elongated at tackle and my legs back, even though I'm kicking back, my feet are consistent. How fast I get off, that's where you change it off. <coughs> because If I'm taking these big ass steps, and you're going to see it in my college film too sometimes, if I take a big ass kick, sooner or later, your body's going to open up. Nobody does, uh, unless it's a big kick like Joe, he'll do a big kick back, but then everything else after that is short. So if you want to change that up, that all depends on your kid. But how I, how I see it, no matter what, you're getting back and then keeping that same kick, keeping that same hip square, and you're just, you're eyeing that, right? So when we talk about the vertical set, we need to get the kid back and coach the consistency. So some of the drills, and we'll talk about this more on the third day, drill work. When I'm here, I'm working. There's a difference between the set and the kick. The set is the first initial movement out of a stance. So my set is back and giving me space. And even my second kick might get me back. But sooner or later, I slow it down or I speed it up, depending on that guy's rush. And I have to match him. Remember, we, we talk about telling him where to go. He does not control the situation. That is, that is very, very huge and very, very key. Any questions? So with your experience and all that from when you were playing in football to your level right now, so what, what are some of your advices for those types? To do more in the off season. Like, I know it's hard because we have jobs, right, uh, in careers outside of outside of practice and things like that. But if we can find a way to consistently work with these kids and consistently um, consistently understand that, you know, even in the off season we're working, I'm telling you, it, it, it use, use the whole calendar year. And I understand some kids play sports. I understand it's hard. That then depends on the commitment level, but challenge those kids to be able to, maybe you're able to work with them on a Tuesday and teach them some drill work. One of your assistant coaches can work on them with another day, but it has to be consistent because that's the biggest, that's the biggest drop off is sometimes we have coaches who disagree with the head coach and disagree sometimes with, they try to, they try to change it. Let's just change that atmosphere. Let's, let's have everybody on the same page. And, and, and I, I strongly feel like if, and I understand it's different, right? Like kids are kids. Like we're not gonna treat them like professional football players and ask them to come in every day and work the crap. But I mean, we need to hold the standard that if we wanna change the, the, the level of gameplay on this island, we, 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 we absolutely have to under, teach. I was never taught technique. Like well, that's, that's until the difference because uh, I think I mentioned to you before, like uh, you know the the coaching style in the states, especially in the youth football league, they really concentrate on the techniques. Right. And, but over here, some, I see the style kind of different here, where it's mostly about plays. Yeah. No. So mm -hmm. you know, I, that's why I see the difference, you know, back there. When I'm in the off season right now, and I and 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 this should be with any of the players, right? Like, you have to understand that there's not only a there's not only the X's and O's and understanding formation and 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 teaching teaching these kids on a whiteboard what their assignment is because you're the the you play faster in your technique and better and more efficiently if you know your X's and O's. So keeping their assignment, especially in youth football, right, 
um, like I said, let's challenge, let's challenge the coaches, challenge yourself as coaches of youth football on, on trying to find a way to be able to consistently teach schemes to these kids and get them better. And, and you know based off of the level of kids on what you need to teach them more at first and up front with X's and O's. But I play faster and I play my technique better when, when I know what I'm doing. So get that out the way, get the X's and O's out the way and more consistent and quiz these kids. I mean, hold them accountable on understanding their playbook. Because if you get understanding your playbook and you know and you turn it into second nature, you, you, you're, you're t then, I mean, I shouldn't have to focus on assignment when I'm playing. I shouldn't have to think, okay, I got this guy, I got that guy, I got this. Because then you're gonna, like, you're gonna, you're, you're not gonna worry about your technique. But you need to establish to these kids that we need to know at all levels of the game, we need to know our assignment down to a T, so that way we can just focus on technique and coach technique during the year. Because you don't want to be, have, yes, you're going to change different game plans for, for teams. Like if you play a team early in the year, maybe you might change some of the schemes that you use as a coach. That's on you, and, 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 and that's on you as a coach. But it's not too much different, right? Like my assignment on power scheme doesn't really too much change on the formation. Um, on uh, my assignment on, on a wide zone or inside zone scheme doesn't too change too much on who we're working to. It, it, it's, it's, if you can create a basis of understanding on assignment, then, <coughs> then they move faster. Did that, did that answer, Coach, a little bit? It, it, and like I said, you know, there's a difference. Uh, you, you hold your kids more and more accountable as they keep progressing. But if you can try to get as much consistent technique with these kids, then they can, I mean, I, I know my body's different than other tackles and their bodies are different. Then I'm going to change, I'm gonna be able to freestyle my technique just a little bit and change it depending on who I'm gonna play. For as far as coaches, we all just rely on our playing experience. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every coach has their own coaching scheme and everything, but it'd be nice. Really thank you for coming out and, and, and educating coaches and Pat as well for bringing them out. But if we can have just the same lingo across the board, I, I think it would be a great thing for the community here on I, mean, I, I think that as coaches, you guys don't, don't think that you don't need to get better. You know what I'm saying? Take your pride away. You don't know everything. Coaches get better. Belichick gets better every single year. Now it's a little bit more advanced. But challenge yourself to go online. I mean, I understand some guys here might not work internet that well, but start using it. Start using your resources, right? Start using your resources. We have the internet. You can YouTube some of these things, but the biggest part that I want to, to establish is, like, if we can teach that number system on identifying, you know what I mean? And, 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 and using that type of lingo on, you know, hey, coach, I had a three technique. Hey, coach, I had a nine technique. Hey, coach, you know, and, and kids, by the way, don't, don't, try, don't, try, don't try focusing so much on, especially, with, and I understand there's three different, some coaches have three different levels, but just, just understand that the little kids like, you kind of have to dumb it down a little bit, but don't, like, if you, I feel like kids are smart enough that if you're able to teach them the, those type of basics on, 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 on the positions and, and, and fronts and stuff like that, I feel like they, I feel like they can. I encourage Larry's got the slides for the defensive side. Come on back. Thank you.